All right, today is the day and it is Leviathan Tuesday. We are getting some things done on the chassis so that we can get ready for putting the cabin subframe on. The cabin subframe is getting built right as we speak. So we hopefully we can keep ahead of those people over there at KCI and get things ready. So when they get their subframe done, we can put it on the chassis. Anyway, we're gonna take a look today at putting in a fuel tank and the first of the subframe attachment points in the three-point mounting system. Let's jump in, take a look. Now the subframe's gonna be mounted with a three-point system and I'm gonna use these uh, mounting points on the chassis that originally held the pickup bed. Building some brackets that are gonna hold a piece of heavy tubing that goes across. So this uh, three-point pivot will pivot laterally in the back then there'll be two others that pivot perpendicular to that but this one's just like i said made up of these brackets that are going to mount to our original chassis mounts with the tube that crosses it was all made out of a pretty heavy well a quarter inch uh, steel plate and there is a bit of a gap between these two mounts that we're going to be attaching this with about 17 inches so there is a little bracket that goes underneath there and makes it the span broken in half. So once these two brackets are welded up, I'm going to go ahead and temporarily bolt them into place so that I can get my tubing set. And I bought a piece of a uh, five foot long, knew it was somewhere close to that. So I'm going to clean it up, get the oil off of it so I can mark it. I just need to mark it and uh, trim a little bit off of it. Now the brackets on the subframe will come and land between these two brackets, but they will ride on this piece of tubing. So once I got my measurements, um, just chop that thing off, make it uh, the right length plus half an inch. So it gives me a quarter inch on each side. So now all I have to do is uh, check quarter inch, hang it off the end of my brackets. And I know that then it's now centered and I'll go ahead and tack weld it up. Gonna jump to the other side and uh, that side's got a little bit of a gap so I need to pivot that bracket was not sitting flat. And once this thing's tack welded, I can uh, of course take it to a little more convenient position and go ahead and weld it up on all sides. Now this is just about done with this piece and you'll see it back a little bit later. And there it is all painted up and installed. But you might also see in this picture, there is a fuel tank in there, nice silver fuel tank. You can take a look about putting that in place. Now to do that, I'm going to attach that fuel tank to a couple of the cross members for the chassis. The two frame rails of the chassis are joined together by these uh, three inch round tubes. I'm gonna build a bracket that uh, will hold the fuel tank and keep it space down at level and I had a couple of these uh, heavy uh, sheet metal brackets built for the front of the vehicle that I'm not going to use so luckily they were all kind of pre-bent and so I'm just going to chop them up and make them fit to what I need here once I get all these pieces all cut up I'm going to bend them up now I've had a couple of people ask me about this little press brake that I use on my hydraulic press and it's certainly yes it's just a homemade thing and super simple to make half inch steel for the press it's got a 90 degree bevel on it and then this real heavy angle iron just welded together that the bracket slides down in and anything of course getting in there and pressed by 20 tons gets bent to 90 degrees certainly don't need the 20 tons to do this but this is just the some sheet metal strapping that i've uh, cut out of a piece of galvanized sheet i'm going to bend up where this is gonna to bolt to our uh, bracket to strap the fuel tank on. I'm gonna bend it up to a double turn back so that the metal is doubled there on the bend so that any stresses gonna to have to go through two pieces of metal rather than just uh, be able to tear one piece of the sheet metal. And then I put a couple other bends to uh, make the shape of the fuel tank. And we'll put those on in just a moment. We need the main brackets attached to our cross member tubes. So they were bent up and they of course uh, fit right around these, uh, like I said, these three inch crossover tubes. Mark them up so I can grind off and know 
where I need to remove all the paint off the chassis so we get a good weld. And then try to hunt for a nice ground as well. And we will get these brackets welded in place. Now the one bracket, the first one that closer to the chassis has a couple of holes drilled to hold the strap. Then on the opposite side, we'll have another hole to bolt the bracket once we get the fuel tank in there. Now these brackets, of course, bent just slightly over the three inches, so they just kind of pinch onto that pipe and hold in place. But that one you see, not quite tight enough, keeps slipping down a little bit, but we will get it and get it tack welded and then it's not going anywhere. Now these brackets are a little bit longer because the tube is a little bit higher than the front one. And of course the front one's got a little bit of a curve to it so that bracket's made to adjust for that curvature as well. And everything seems to be fitting nicely and so we're just going to go ahead and weld it up completely. Run some good beads. Now these straps will going to be riding steel on steel, which is not a good thing for noise and for wear. So when I install this tank, I'm going to be putting some rubber between the metal straps. Now I had to uh, run off and have dinner with my wife and son and daughter-in-law. And so when I came back dark and I thought I would get this thing finished. Video of course, uh, picking up okay with a little bit of light on here. But I'm just gonna get the, these little galvanized straps bolted in and then I'm gonna find that uh, it's not worth working in the dark and trying to do a video that I needed to do a little more in-depth work here. Figured I just wait to the next day, but here you see me just adjusting the straps, kind of getting them ready to the size of the tank. Then I have this uh, like eighth inch rubber sheeting that I've cut into nice strips. I'm gonna cut them to length and then I'm just gonna attach them to the tank with a, just a wrap of electrical tape just to hold them in place while I put this thing in position. Find my measuring tape because I want to just uh, find out the spacing so I can get this next rubber strap in the right place, not have to adjust it while it goes in. Same thing, I'll just uh, slip it on there and then wrap it in place with some electrical tape. To hold it in place, like I said, don't have to mess with that while I'm trying to jockey it into position by myself. Now you may notice here that I did not get video of the final installation, but you, this is kind of the general idea. And I say general idea because uh, I'm about to insert this tank into position and find that there is a serious problem. There's a hole in the tank for the filler spout. And once it went into place, that filler spout is not going to fit, runs right against the frame rail. So I'm showing you this to show how the installation took place, but I actually turn the whole tank around and I will have to take the filler spout that came with the tank and uh, cut it, weld some extra pipe to it, give it about a 120 degree turn so it makes the bend comes around, points to the outside edge of the vehicle so we can put a fill spout on it. But you get the idea of how these straps go around. I've got the little access windows that I've drilled and cut into these uh, brackets that I made and so I can reach my fingers in there and get the bolts through. There of course is a bolt now in the strap that I've uh, put as short as I can so when I tighten it up it cinches that thing down. And here it is in place in the right position now but um, if there's not one problem there's always two. And I have this uh, fuel sender that I bought that was supposed to go to this tank. Well I assumed it would as advertised next to it, you do on the websites. If it seems like it's on the page, it should fit. But you're about to see that that is not always true. Not quite the same, is it? Luckily, this fuel sender is super simple. Just two leads, a ground and the positive lead. And that positive lead just feeds to a single hole in this little disc. So I'm just going to take this off. 
I'll have to drill me one hole and then the five holes mount it. So I just pat a sheet of uh, some stainless steel around, take my cutter, rough out a, a disc to replace the original, and I will just have to uh, grind that smooth. Then I took this thing off. You're not going to see that, but I drilled it with a single hole in the middle and then the five holes around the outside edge to mount to match the tank. And there it is. Always a problem, but always a fix. You can see there the filler spout that needs to be changed as well, but that's about it. Well, there you go. We have one of the subframe mounts done. The fuel tank's in. We will make that final attachment on the fuel tank once we get our under tray built. Um, we need to get those other two subframe mounts done and the rear bumper, and then we'll be ready to put that subframe on. Anyway, that's our video today. Thanks for stopping by. Come back.